Humans really care about other humans a lot. Yeah. What data was used to train Sora? We used publicly available data and licensed data. So videos on YouTube? I'm actually not sure about that. Okay. Videos from Facebook, Instagram? You know, if they were publicly available, um, available, yet yeah, publicly available to use, um, there might be the data, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. Um, well, first of all, like, always have empathy for people who are like, hey, you did this thing and it's affecting me and, you know, we didn't talk about it first or it was just like a new a new thing like the um on individuals private work um under yeah we, we we try not to train on that stuff we we really don't want to be here upsetting people but you know if i'm like an artist for example a i would like to be able to opt out of people generating art in my style Okay, so Sam wants to talk about opt-outs. We can do that. Let's take a look at what's going on with those. OpenAI allows creators to opt out of training data. For the first time, OpenAI is allowing creators to remove their work from training data for Dolly 3. The opt-out procedure is so onerous that it almost seems like it was specifically created to fail. In order to request the removal of owned or copyrighted photos from the Dolly training data, image owners and authors can now use a new form made available by OpenAI. An artist, owner, or rights holder must provide an individual copy of each image they want deleted from Dolly's training dataset along with a description for OpenAI's new process to even evaluate an opt-out request. For the majority of artists, this might entail having to individually submit hundreds or thousands of pieces of work. The Georgia O'Keeffe Museum, for instance, as the owner of the artist's rights, would have to make unique requests for every one of O'Keeffe's more than 2,000 works of art in order to have them removed from Dolly's dataset. OpenAI could have implemented a system that would have allowed an owner or artist to ask for the removal of all of their work in a single request. However, the corporation chose not to. Why? Most likely because it needs as much data as possible to create its AI models. Even if OpenAI approves an artist's or owner's request, it will only apply to future training data. Translation, the internet is free if you ask for forgiveness later. And B, if they do generate art in my style, I'd like to have some economic model associated with that. So that, say, if you're an artist, we don't just totally block you. Do you think training AI should be or is fair use under copyright law? I think the question behind that question is, do people who create valuable data deserve to have some way that they get compensated for use of it? And that, I think the answer is yes. So what is the word open in open AI mean? I would definitely pick a different, speaking of going back with an Oracle, I'd pick a different name. Um, one of the things that I think open AI is doing that is the most important of everything that we're doing is putting powerful technology in the hands of people for free as a public good. Not, we're not, you know, we don't run ads on a free version. We don't monetize it in other ways. We just say it's part of our mission. We want to put increasingly powerful tools in the hands of people for free and get them to use them. Personally, I love free shit, so I'm super down to talk about this because the question of how AI companies will monetize their projects looms large. For now, many AI projects are free to use because their creators are following the classic Silicon Valley playbook of charging little to nothing for products in order to crowd out competition. Many startups like OpenAI who do this are subsidized by huge investments from venture capital firms or large corporations. While unsuccessful companies that adopt this strategy slowly bleed money, the winners often end up with vice-like grips on markets that they can control as they see fit. And I think that kind of open is really important to our mission. I think if you give people great tools and get them to use them and let them go build an incredible future for each other with that, uh, that's a big deal. So if we can keep putting like free or low cost or free and low cost powerful AI tools out in the world, uh, I think it's a huge deal for how we fulfill the mission. But people have got to get paid. I don't know yet what the answer is. People have proposed a lot of different things. We've some, tried some different models. 
But, you know, I think a good analogy would be the way humans treat animals. It's not that we hate animals. I think humans love animals and have a lot of affection for them. But when the time comes to build a highway between two cities, we are not asking the animals for permission. We just do it because it's important for us. Creativity, in, in some sense, has been easier for AI than people thought. We'll be able to express ourselves in new creative ways. We'll make just incredible things um, for each other, for ourselves, for the world, for, for kind of this unfolding human story. Uh,